Hey, it's Karen Bryant from MMA Heat. I'm here talking with Ray Seffo, who is not only the president of the World Series of Fighting, but he is also a competitor on World Series of Fighting number four. And Ray, we've spoken so many times, but it's always a pleasure. Um, how are you feeling right now, just a couple days out from your fight? I can't wait, honestly. You know, it's been a, a long camp, and uh, I've had a great camp. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I can't wait to fight. Well, let's talk about the camp thing because, you know, I've spent a lot of time with you. I remember when you were training Vitor and then you were going to be fighting a week later and that fight didn't go your way. And I mean, I know you're not the type to make excuses, but certainly that probably factored into it, spending so much time training somebody else. So how does right. it feel again to have the time all dedicated to yourself? Oh, it's been amazing. Um, it feels so good to actually have a camp where, it, you know, it's all you and you, I have the guys um, my team that it's, you know, at Extreme Couture that uh, all we focus on is my time to train, you know what I mean? So it's been great. Um, I haven't done that in, in a few years, but so I, I'm excited. I feel great. I started this camp at 273. I weighed myself yesterday. I was 254 and I'm eating normal. Wow. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's, I feel great. I feel good. That's great. Well, now in the, it's funny because we've also talked in the past about how long you were going to keep going, and the Crow Cop fight was kind of almost like you we were. It was more of like, a, how could you not fight Crow Cop, right? Right, right. But so, how how did this go down with the calculations of you not even knowing when you were around a hundred fights, which I just find insane. How did you not know? Well, I th I thought I was around ninety you know, between ninety three and ninety six. Yeah. Um, but I was four fights off uh, until um, I spoke to, I get a phone call from uh, my former coach, Lolo Himuli from New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, and he was talking about um, a few other uh, people that he's in uh, working with, or should I say he's working with. Um, anyway, um, and they want to get into MMA and they want, you know, they were talking about me fighting. Yeah. And um, so then I, I'm like, hey, listen, um, I... I said Wikipedia has me at 87, which is completely wrong. I know that. Right. Uh, but I think I'm not sure exactly how many fights we had before we went to New Zealand, uh, went to K1. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm I'm thinking I'm at 93, 96 fights. Yeah. So we counted it back, and he it's goes, insane. no, no, no. Yeah, he says, no, we we actually you had about 18 fights before we went to K1. So when we counted it back. Um, uh, we were at 100. Wow. wow. And I was already four weeks into my camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, so this fight is going to be 101, uh, 101, and, and, and I feel great. I haven't had a camp like this in a long time. I'm fighting a, a solid opponent, uh, Dave Hakuba, yeah, who's yeah. Uh, fight record speaks for itself, yeah. 25. Um, you know, there's not at all, at any means, I'm, I'm taking Dave lightly because he's a big, strong guy. And I understand that the fight can end at any time. You make one mistake and it could, could be over. You know that. I know yes, that. Yes, of course. Who knows that? Well, fighting knows that. So, um, that being said, I, I feel good. You know, I, I haven't felt like this in a long time in terms of training. And I, I put in a great camp. And, and uh, uh, you know, I'm ready. 100%. Now, do you do you expect that you might be a little bit emotional at all when you're making this ring walk? Oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. definitely emotional. Um, I mean, it's not only my 101 fight. This could possibly be my last fight. Right. Uh, I'm, you know, and I've said this in a few other interviews where I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is going to be my last fight. Yeah. And the reason why it's 99.9 .9 is because. Uh, I would like to have a final fight in front of my hometown in New Zealand yeah. uh, to finish it off because that's where it started. So I would like to have that fight. That being said, I'm dedicating this fight to my son. Nice. And and so this could, could possibly be my last fight. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, how how difficult was it for you transitioning into MMA? Obviously, we know we have Tyrone Spong on the same card. I'm wondering if you guys have probably talked about this. I mean, you're, you're such excellent stand-up fighters. How hard was it learning the ground game and, and not even just learning the ground game, but learning those transitions into a ground game and, and being okay with that, being comfortable there? Well, you know, because I live in the gym, you know, I'm at an extreme couture uh, six days a week, mm -hmm. twice a day. And when you live in that world um, and when my camp started, I've learned more uh, in this camp about the ground, on the ground, how to, you know, worst case scenarios 
than I have ever known. And so, um, and fortunately, you know, I, I we have a great team at Extreme, but I also, you know, uh, go to Drysdale nice. BJ, um, and I train there with, uh, you know, with the team there as well. Uh, and Robin is, is amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, Kyle Griffin, who's been an amazing uh, racing coach, who's helped as well. Yeah. Eric Nixick has uh, been, you know, my pretty much been the head guy running the camp. Uh, so you know that's why the camp has been great because I've had pe I have people that has been in there, uh, you know, actually running the camp mm -hmm. rather than, you know, okay, I got to do this, I got to do that. Right. Uh, Dewey Cooper, who's a K1 oh, fighter. I know Dewey, of course. Uh, so Dewey's been my kickboxing coach for this fight. Nice. Um, you know, uh, it, it's been a, a it's been a good camp, uh, and I've had a lot of good people. Um, sometimes we we respond down to syndicate. Uh, John Wood and the team down there. So, you know, the, everybody's helped a lot, and I can't thank everybody enough because they really, um, you know, put in some time to my camp, and, and, and I feel great. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm ready to fight. Um, and listen, uh, I, I don't uh, look to disappoint anybody. I'm going in there with the uh, intention of coming out on top and, and be the winner. So, um, that being said, I also understand that, the, you know, it's the fight game. I think it happened, right. Absolutely. Well, I listen, and I have to say, too, there's there's a part of me that, and, you know, not right now because my folks at, at Fox and Fuel are wonderful, but I've wanted to punch a couple of bosses in the face. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, so I got to say, like, when Dave, got, when Dave got the offer, how did that play out? Because, I'm, you know, is he like, hey, how long is my contract good for, win or lose type thing? How'd that go out, how, go down? I'm cutting him a few words. <laughs> yeah, he's totally he's done. He's totally done. <laughs> Done. No, no, no. Listen, um, uh, I'm jumping in there as an opponent. Um, yeah. I'm filling a spot that Dave was already in there as the co-main sure. for uh, WSOF three, yeah. um, and so unfortunately Hollis got hurt, and uh, and the timing was just right. And uh, Ali talked to me about fighting on you know who's our um, matchmaker, and I was like, hey, yeah, why not? Uh, because I've had, you know, I had offers from Moscow as well as um, Australia, Japan, and so um, we thought, well, uh, you know, this this is actually probably a better opportunity because I get to be at home, I get to camp at home, you know, I get to be around my team, um, I get to fight on my own league, which was, you know, for, before we even had the first show, you know, the media were asking, why? Well, of course, are you going to fight? That was our, yeah, we wanted to know that you would step into the Decagon, and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, now it's reality, and uh, I feel great, and I can't wait. Awesome. Well, I'm excited uh, to be there, because I've, I've talked to you so many times, and I think I was at one of your fights, but 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 this one being the 99.9% .9 sure last one, Ray, right. uh, I'm really excited. So thanks for taking the time to talk to me today, and uh, best of luck, not only in your fight, but with the organization. I mean, it seems like it's going really well, yeah? Right, absolutely. We're you know there's some big and better things coming next year for sure, hundred yeah. um, percent. So, you know, and that's and that's another reason why um, this is gonna be if the fight in the season doesn't happen, this will be my last fight yeah. because there's so many great things that uh, uh, Wizards of Fighting is coming into. Um, my son, uh, you know, I gotta have time to spend with my little man who's the love of my life. Of uh, I coach, you know, so. Yeah. Like I said, you know, sometimes you got to leave other important things. Listen, I, I've had a great career, and I'm content with this being my last fight. You know what I mean? And, and um, I, I'm really – I'm in a good place with it. And so, uh, you know, um, I'm looking forward to the new chapter of life. Very nice. Very nice. Ray. Well, awesome. Congratulations on all your success so far, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you on Saturday night. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. Take care. Bye. Bye.